Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for joining us today. Um, just wanna appreciate everybody who's here live. Um, we've got people that have been with us for years and we have uh, new people that have just been with us for you know, several weeks. And um, um, Betsy, I'm not sure if you've been on the call before or maybe only once or twice, if, uh, if at all. So I wanna welcome um, you and if there's anyone uh, else just joining us on the podcast for the first time or you've only been here just a few times I want to just welcome you and thank you for um, stepping out of your comfort zone doing something new and uh, trying out this uh, community that we have and I just love the energy that's created here um, I get so many texts and emails from people that uh, listen to the podcast or here live on a regular basis and the major changes that are happening in their lives because of starting the day with gratitude here on our call. So thank you for joining us on the call live today. Thank you for joining us in the podcast. And if you haven't yet joined our, our Facebook community, Breakthrough with Gratitude, I wanna give you a special invitation to come and join us there as well. Um, those who are on live, we have a, uh, a private message group that we um, also a lot of times there's more that needs to be shared after the call is over we just you know we have 30 minutes here and it's hard to say goodbye <laughs> sometimes and um, there's still lots more that could be shared and so lots of ways to connect even beyond the call um, that breakthrough with gratitude group is a great way to do that and uh, if you'd like to be even you know, in on some of the more private conversations that continue after the call. I um, encourage you to be here live and um, we can add you to that, uh, that private message group. So just text me or private message me, let me know that you're interested in being part of that, um, that uh, private message group too, if, you, um, if you're interested in that. Um, I just love all of you, I'm just so grateful. Um, to have this community to go to, to share my insights and to also receive so much from, from you. It's just uh, totally fulfilling every morning. So thank you. Um, for today, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna set a timer for 90 seconds. We're gonna do a private silent meditation. And uh, the word that came to me was hints, H-I-N-T-S, gratitude for hints. So, you know, just little things that we get along the way that um, help our lives be easier. And um, that's what we're going to focus on today. So gratitude for hints, um, just 90 second private silent meditation, write down whatever inspiration comes to you. Begin.
All right. Um, interesting thoughts that um, came to me today. I'm really grateful the word confirmation came to me. I'm really grateful for confirmation that comes along my path, these little hints that I'm on the right path. And um, the next thought that came to me was um, breadcrumbs. You know, we use that, that term a lot. It's like little breadcrumbs, you know, that just kind of lead us along the path. And then I thought of Hansel and Gretel when they dropped, uh, they were, they left stones in the, um, forest as they were going from um, being led from home out into the woods they left stones and we were able to to find their way back home but then one day they didn't have stones they had breadcrumbs and the um, birds ate their breadcrumbs <laughs> and they weren't able to find their way home but uh, it's interesting how our brains just kind of like one thing leads to another because I remembered that home was not really a safe place for them. They had a wicked stepmother that lived in that home that was the means of them being led out in the woods to start with. And, um, and the gingerbread house that they went to was not really a safe place either because a witch lived there. And it's like, wow, the safest place for them was in the woods. <laughs> it was actually really great that all those red crumbs got eaten up and they were just out there in the woods. Um, anyway, <laughs> crazy little thoughts. But the uh, kind of how I brought that full circle was I realized that um, the breadcrumbs, the quote breadcrumbs, you know, our hints or our little tidbits that we get along the way, along our journey, that are really confirmation that we're on the right path. I feel um, uh, that those help to guide me home. And uh, unlike uh, the, the story of Hansel and Gretel, my home has my heavenly father, has my, all my brothers and sisters, it has just, it's a space of pure love and acceptance, of knowing, of wholeness, of being safe, protected, like nothing could be wrong there. And that's what I feel about these hints, um, that they take me home. They take me to a place where I'm in alignment with my Heavenly Father and feeling whole and safe and protected and knowing even beyond faith um, that feeling of being centered and confident in um, you know, the pure truths that um, my Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ represent. Who else? Um, Robert, you have something. Well, it is an interesting word, uh, hint, I think is what you mm -hmm. said, because another word, the word that came to me was cue. Mm -hmm. And, and so, and I happened to be writing the story uh, this morning before I got on, where um, my mother, excuse me, my father and her mother and his mother had a, a close relationship very close and uh, she ultimately died in her bed uh, and that bed uh, stayed in the house and a friend uh, asked if daddy if they could uh, kind of be the care caretaker of the home uh, for a while and he agreed well in that bed that my grandmother died in this woman, this friend of the family, felt this uh, feeling of being sat on hmm. and thought it was really odd that that would uh, happen. After the third time, she says, I can't stay in the house anymore. Well, at that time, I wasn't, I didn't know anything about Jesus. I didn't know anything about religion, uh, per se. By the time I got married, I'd been baptized and uh, came to come to know more about Jesus. Well, I had forgotten and thought nothing of uh, Jenny is her name, Jenny's story. I asked, I said, uh, I asked my parents, well, can I have the uh, Omi's bed, my grandmother's bed? And uh, it was a queen bed. It was perfect. And so uh, n nothing happened <laughs> uh, for a while. 
And then all of a sudden, I had this uh, feeling of being suppressed. I couldn't move my body. And I remember back to Jenny's story, and the only thing that broke that, that suppression was the hint or the cue utter the word Jesus. Hmm. I, I could only move my tongue. I couldn't move any other part of my body, including my mouth. So I did the best I could to utter Jesus. Uh, and it broke the spell or whatever it was. That, uh, that, that experience happened another three or four times. And it wasn't until my wife experienced it. She said, we're done with this bed. <laughs> <laughs> so it was something, I don't know what it was, but I took the cue. I took the hint. When that word came into my mouth, because each time I said Jesus, it broke. And I just thought that was so interesting. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, so a couple of lessons, you know, that I feel like I could gain from that is, first of all, if you're, if you're receiving the hint or the cue that you're feeling suppressed in a bed, maybe that is the cue to get rid of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait for it to happen slow. 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> and this can be yeah. applied to many other things. If we have to step over a log 15 times, like why didn't you just move the log out of the way the first time? <laughs> you, you would think. Yeah. But, and, and, but the other thing is how powerful it is. You know, if we uh, invite um, that light love energy into our lives, um, darkness can't stay where light is. Um, that heaviness has to go away if lightness is mm -hmm. invited into the space. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Deep tea. So we are talking about uh, leaving hints if we are on the right path, but I also see God giving us hints if we are on the wrong path. Mm. But the real question being, are we recognizing those hints? Mm -hmm. So what I see is uh, God gives you like hints all the time. First, starting with small hints, even maybe like a stubbed toe or, you mm -hmm. know, a glass, uh, a glass fallen off your dining table. But when we don't recognize those small, small little things, that's when I think the God gives us the universal slap or, you know, like a tragedy in our lives like a breakup or like a financial issue or something like that, that really makes us go within. And, you know, I think most of our spiritual journeys or awakening starts with the tragedy. So I think mm -hmm. the hints are also dropped along the way when we are on the wrong path, but we just don't see them or recognize them. Mm -hmm. I think you're absolutely right. Um, I, the thought that came to me this morning was keep up with the abundance. And, you know, every day when I'm receiving inspired shortcuts, if I will follow through with those things, the things that are the hints, the things that I'm inspired to do, um, then there's just, I have access to so much abundance. And the same is true that if we're on the wrong path to, you know, those inspired shortcuts that we are getting to get back on the right path, if we can uh, take action on those and get back on the right path, we can avoid the things that are down the road that, you know, maybe they're God given things that help us to awaken us, to get us back on the right path. Maybe it's just a natural result of being on the wrong path. Thank you. So yes, we want, we want to get the, those big things. If we, you know, pay attention to the little things. Right. We don't get the big things if we don't pay attention to the little things. I like that. Thank you. Uh, Lara and then Tyree and Phil. Yeah. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I thought along the same lines as deep tea that, you know, God, God gives me hints all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Good and bad. And the, the story that came to my mind was, um, if you all have ever seen that movie, Bruce Almighty with mm -hmm. uh, Jim Carrey and he, he, um, he's mad at God, you know? And, uh, and there's this one scene where he's like, God, just give me a sign. Just give me a sign, you know? And he's following a truck full of signs, like <laughs> construction signs. And the signs say wrong way. Do not enter. Turn back. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, and he's, he's like sitting there praying for a sign and like he's got all of them right in front of him. And what that made me, what that led me to was just gratitude for God's gentleness, mm-hmm. you know, like he is the good shepherd that just guides us, you know, and, and like, for me, like he's, he's so gentle that, you know, we have to listen. It's a small voice in our minds and hearts. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I love that because God never makes me feel scared or controlled, you know, and, um, and I, so I always feel free. And that is such a beautiful expression of his love in my, in, in and through me, you know, and, um, and, um, and it's just like, if I take the hints, if I'm paying attention, you know, to those gentle nudges that, you know, like, a, like a shepherd, if I'm going in a direction that's probably not going to work out real great, he's giving me a little nudge. You know, if I pay attention, then my life is just, just exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. It's smooth. Even if it doesn't seem like, even if circumstances come along that aren't wonderful and smooth, my life, my experience can be wonderful and, um, and I can love each day so much, you know, but if I don't listen to his guiding hand, then I end up in the brambles. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So that's one of the things that I, that I thought of. I'm just so grateful for his gentle guidance. And that mm-hmm. to me is what a hint really is. Yeah. And that's what it, it, it is. You know, it just is a hint. It's not like, you know, he's not behind you, like whipping you and <laughs> telling you to go someplace. It's just a little hint. And, you know, the scriptures say that he leads us by still waters. And if we will allow exactly. and the, you know, green pastures, and if he, if we will follow those hints, um, that's where we'll be. That's what our life will be like. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Tyree, you had something. So I've had hints and I knew that I needed to take sugar out of my life at least a break or do something and I kept having those hints but I was so emotionally connected to the sugar to because I was trying to and then I learned about primary and secondary foods and I realized that I was trying to fulfill my primary foods with secondary foods like sugar and it wasn't working and it would never work but I wasn't emotionally in a place. And so he kept giving me those hints until I was in a place to receive that and to make those corrections. And I'm just so, like Laura said, I'm so grateful for his gentleness and for his help to, because he knew I was willing, I just couldn't see or find a way myself. So he gently, gently led me, excuse me. He gently led me until I was ready to follow those hints. Awesome. I love that. Um, DT mentioned about, you know, that sometimes uh, it takes a tragedy for us to be awakened. Um, I have had experiences like that where I've been, you know, receiving these hints all along and I know that it's something that I need to do. And it's not necessarily that I don't see it or don't know it or whatever, but a lot of times there is a situation that is like, okay, fine, I will do it. (laughs) And sometimes it takes that, you know, whatever situation, maybe it's not a tragedy. Maybe it's just like, okay, I've stumbled across, I've stumbled over this, this many times, I will actually do something about it. Now I'm, I'm in a place where it's the pain is bigger than the emotional connection that I have with this other, you know, way that I want to be. So, um, yeah, I, I love that God is constant and that he's gentle and that he keeps giving me these hints, um, even if I'm, not, if I'm not taking them. I'm super grateful for that. Thank you. Um, Phil. A lot of thoughts came to my mind, but the one that stick in me with the most is that the hints we have in conversations. Mm-hmm. When we're talking to someone and they disagree with what we're saying, there's all kinds of body language that goes on or when we nod at someone, but we disagree and all of the body language that's going on within us Mm -hmm. and all these hints that tell us, you know, 
this isn't working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this isn't this isn't working, or it's not going to work, or that no matter what I, you know, no matter what said, that you know, um, there's resistance there. And I think that even in marriage, you know, there are hints. Um, well, it's probably especially in marriage, but you know, any kind of relationship. But there are hints that we give um, to each other, and eventually those hints, if they don't if they don't um, get recognized, then they become louder and louder. I, I remember like one time I was, I was interested in this girl before I was, I was married, you know, back in my young years. And um, she wasn't that interested in me, but I just kept pursuing. And finally her friend came over to me and said, can't you take a hint? <laughs> and I said, I was like, and it kind of stung me. I'm like, apparently not <laughs> you know currently i i can't take a hint um but i've learned to take a hint <laughs> i've learned to take a hint and to not offer resistance or at least do some discovery when i see that you know their body language um you know to to figure it out especially when i'm in a session or something like that you know there are hints given all the time that 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 they're not in agreement or that they are uh, battling with a certain concept or something like that. I love that. Yeah. Um, I, I love the concept that you introduced here about the body language that's going on inside of you. Cause definitely there's body language that other people can see of, with me or that I can, you know, take cues and hints from other people, but uh, it's interesting uh, thought to have the body language that's going on inside of us. Definitely some hints that we can, um, you know, that we could take action on. And, you know, if we can, I, I think this is a deeper form of conversation, you know, of communication, of being able to take hints, you know, to receive hints, to be able to listen intuitively, you know, by um, even voice inflections and things like that, um, to, to gain that clear communication. Because if we, if we can't take a hint, then it has to be you know, okay, I've been trying to, you know, not be rude, <laughs> but I'm going to have to just be rude now, you know, and just say something because you're not taking the hint. So I think uh, that's part of that gentleness that happens if we can, you know, receive those hints and take action, make changes based on the hints that we're receiving. Our lives are so much simpler and easier and more gentle. <laughs> and I think we lose communication or we lose the ability to take a hint when we are trapped in time in our mind, when we we're identifying with a physical part of us, we just, we just don't see it. We're, we're too focused in one direction and the, all of it's just a blur. Everything else is a blur and we just get ourselves into a situation because we're so in our mind or we're so, you know, focused on what we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do agree with that. That happens. That totally happens. Um, I think in the scriptures, it's called past feeling. If you get past feeling where your heart is so untouchable, you know, you're not able to, to receive those, those gentle nudges. And that's, that's not a very good place to be because then it takes lots of big things to, to make some changes. Well, I'd love to continue um, getting your thoughts. This has been a really awesome conversation. I, um, want to go ahead and shift over to our permission process, but I do encourage you to get on our Facebook group, Breakthrough with Gratitude, and um, share any other thoughts that you have with, with everyone in that group, because I know there's some people that are not here live that would uh, love to continue this conversation. Let's go ahead and take a deep breath. Just invite you to be open to receive some hints today. Just take a moment and check in with your heart and um, notice how open and willing that you are to receive. And just allow space for more information to be allowed in. And knowing that your agency, your freedom is always given to you and that you always have the freedom to receive, to um, take in whatever these hints you're going to receive 
and to implement them, or you are also welcome. They're just hints, so you are welcome to set them aside if you're not ready to implement them. So just being completely open to receive today, knowing that you have the, um, the freedom to choose whether you want to implement the hints that you're going to receive. And the first question I have for you is, what is the limiting belief that's coming up for you about opening yourself to new information? To hints that might be out there and available to you. What is the limiting belief that's coming up for you? <clears throat> and if you hold on to that limiting belief, what will be the cost to you receiving hints? through inspiration, through the Holy Spirit. And if you don't like that cost, if you um, feel that this is not serving you to hold on to this limiting belief, you can give yourself permission to let go of it and to choose a new belief. And if you're ready to give yourself permission to choose a new belief, say yes. 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 Awesome. Yes. Thank you. And so if you are ready to let go of your limiting belief and choose into some new beliefs, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and write down two or three new beliefs that will um, help you, uh, that will take the place of those limiting beliefs and help you to step more fully into being open to allowing your heart to be written upon by the finger of God. Allow yourself to be, to feel completely, to have intuition, to receive these hints, inspired shortcuts, new beliefs that will empower you to be more open, more moldable, more able to be guided and led into those gentle by those gentle words into green pastures and still waters has been, has been shared. What new beliefs will empower you to being open to receive hints from above? And I invite you to bring these new beliefs as you're getting clear with what those words are, to really bring these new beliefs into your, into your mind, into your heart, into your soul. And look at these new beliefs logically with your mind. And will this serve you as you move forward? And if there's anything about this new belief that doesn't feel like it will serve you, go ahead and make those changes. And as you're um, perfecting these new beliefs and bringing them into your heart and allowing yourself to be more open to receive, what's your hint today? What's your inspired shortcut? What's the one thing that you could do today that would empower you to move forward in the most efficient and perfect manner? And just receive that shortcut, receive that hint and allow it to be perfect, no matter how small or big it seems, it's the perfect, the one thing that you could do today that will help you to feel the most at peace and the most fulfilled and like, you, and knowing confirmation that you are on the right path. And um, we are at the end of the, our time, and so I'm not going to open it up for some shares afterwards. I do want to draw those who are here live on the call, just draw your attention to the chat. There's been some, some shares going on there, and if there is something that you would like to share, go ahead and share there. I will um, not close the call out. I'll uh, end the recording, but I won't close the call out right away, so you can have time to um, check in on the chat for 
some thoughts that are being shared here live. And I also encourage you to share your thoughts in the Facebook group. This is um, a place where those who are wanting to participate in our gratitude community, but are not able to get on our call live can continue to participate. And uh, we'd love to be able to, to offer that to those who are not able to get here, get on here live. Um, thank you for being here today. If there's anyone who's needing some extra support in this area, I would love to have a conversation with you. All you have to do is just go to askwileen.com and that will take you directly to my calendar and you can schedule a 15 minute call. <clears throat> it's a 15 minute free mentoring session with me and uh, would love to have a conversation with you. Askwileen.com. <clears throat> thank you for being here with us today. Um, we will not be together on Saturday or Sunday, so I encourage you to continue your gratitude practice, your daily GPS, and um, we'll be back together on Monday morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for listening, and I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.